the Caribbean. Famous for endless blue skies and sunshine and beaches of pristine white sand, fringed with palm trees and lapped by turquoise seas. But these islands also have a wild side, far less familiar. They have been forged by volcanic forces, and they sit in the firing line of some of the most violent storms on Earth. The wildlife that calls this place home has had to adapt to island life, becoming either specialists or opportunists. Some are seafarers, while others started off as castaways. From small iridescent birds to wandering ocean leviathans, the wildlife of these islands is both surprising and spectacular. The Caribbean is the jewel of the tropics. Caribbean is an archipelago of over 7,000 islands and coral reefs, lying within the crystal clear waters of the Caribbean Sea. From just a few meters wide to hundreds of kilometers across, every island is different, and each has its own unique wildlife. From the tropical forests covering the highest peaks to the reefs hidden beneath the waves, the Caribbean hides a treasure trove of life. Just off the coast of South America lies the island of Trinidad, the southernmost island in the Caribbean. Legends of hidden treasure have long drawn travelers to these islands. But some of nature's greatest seafarers have been visiting these shores for far longer. At night, Trinidad's beaches are visited by creatures that have been around for over a hundred million years. Leatherback turtles have come here to nest. Each year, females cross the open ocean to return to these waters from thousands of kilometers away. They make the grueling journey so they can lay their eggs on the very beaches where their own lives began. Leatherbacks are the largest sea turtles on Earth, growing up to two meters long and weighing up to 900 kilos. Her massive flippers help her to dig a hole in the sand. When the nest is deep enough, she lays up to a hundred eggs. The temperature of the nest will determine if the babies will be male or female. Higher than around 30 degrees Celsius, and females will emerge. Cooler nests will produce males. Among the normal eggs, she also lays smaller ones 
which are yokeless and sterile. These will collapse over time, giving the babies more space and air when it's time to hatch. When she has finished, she fills the nest using her back flippers, creating a large disturbed area which confuses potential predators. The whole process can take up to three hours. It takes a lot out of her. But she's not the only one here. Trinidad has one of the largest populations of nesting leatherbacks in the Atlantic. At the peak of the season, space is in short supply. Up to 500 turtles can visit a beach in just one night. Turtles coming in to nest collide with those ready to return to the ocean. The scrum for a spot results in turtles digging up each other's eggs. Some start laying so late that by the time their nest is finished, it is daylight again. Leatherbacks only come to nest every few years, but in one season, a female can lay up to 10 different sets of eggs. Buried eggs, which remain undisturbed, take 65 days to fully develop before they're ready to hatch. Baby turtles emerge in perfect synchrony. Safety in numbers is their best chance of making it to the sea. But only 6% will survive their first year. Instinct spurs the vulnerable hatchlings on. Even at this young age, the leatherback can propel itself through the water with an efficiency no other turtle can match. These turtles will remain in the mysterious depths of the open ocean for most of their lives. They will increase in weight by up to 20,000 times. And only the adult females will ever return to the Caribbean's beaches. North from Trinidad is a chain of islands which sit between two tectonic plates. This was once a region of intense seismic activity which gave birth to the island of Dominica. Being just 26 million years old, it's the youngest island. Less than 50 kilometers long, with volcanic peaks towering 1,500 meters above the sea, it's a vertical island. Despite its small size, Dominica has nine of the 17 active volcanoes in the Caribbean, the highest concentration found anywhere in the world. All the ash spewed out by these volcanoes has made the soils extremely fertile. Just about anything will take root. Plants have flourished, and their flowers provide food for some of the Caribbean's fastest movers. 
hummingbirds. Having no sense of smell, they find the sugar they need by visiting the forest flowers, which advertise their nectar by being colorful. These tiny dynamos have the fastest metabolism of any vertebrate on Earth. Their hearts can beat over a thousand times a minute, and wings can flap up to 200 times a second when they dive. To fuel their flying, they must eat every 10 minutes, and up to three times their body weight every day. At just nine centimeters tall, the Antillean crested hummingbird is one of the Caribbean's smallest. Only the males bear the brilliant green crest that gives these birds their name. Females are more drab, which helps camouflage them whilst raising their young. Chicks need extra protein, so they're fed a regurgitated mixture of nectar and insects. On this rich diet, they grow quickly. The nest is made using spider silk, making it elastic, so it stretches as the chicks develop. Just two weeks after hatching, they're almost ready to fledge. The Caribbean's volcanic past plays another crucial role. The mountains that have been pushed up are so tall, they create their own weather. As moist air from the sea rises, it forms clouds. As the clouds cool, they release rain on the forests below. Rainforests are by far the most biodiverse ecosystems on the planet. And the rainforests of Puerto Rico is no exception. Heading northwest from Dominica, the island of Puerto Rico sits in the middle of the Caribbean. In the east of the island, the Luquillo Mountains stand over a thousand meters high and are home to the misty, lush forest of El Junque. This rainforest is a haven for reptiles. A giant anole basks on a tree trunk. These large lizards have long jaws, giving them a powerful bite. And like a chameleon, they have eyes which move independently. The serrated ridge of scales on its tail, reminiscent of a dinosaur. Like geckos, they have adhesive pads under their toes, which enable them to cling to vertical surfaces. The lizard cuckoo is their main predator. It will make a meal of any lizard it can catch. Time to be less conspicuous. It's not clear if the cuckoo has spotted it, but the anol isn't taking any chances. He'll be harder to catch further up. The cuckoo, however, is actually concentrated on catching caterpillars. 75% of its diet is lizards, but it supplements it with spiders insects, and grubs.
Night in El Junque comes alive with the sound of the real winners in this rainforest. The amphibians. And in particular, the cocky frog. 13 different species live here. It has rained and male frogs are calling everywhere. Two species make the classic cocky call, after which they're named. This call is for attracting females and warning off males. Males hear the co, and females hear the key. Females, which are larger than the males, sit listening for a call they like the sound of. Once a female is interested, she moves closer. If on closer inspection, she still likes what she sees, she gets close enough to touch him. Contact is his cue. He starts to lead her to the nest site he chose earlier. Every time she touches him, he leads her closer. Sight, they enter an embrace and mate. Dead palm leaves make ideal nests. This female is already laying her eggs. The male is inside, ready to take on his important role. Her job complete, the female leaves. And the male is left to look after the clutch. He will look after the eggs until they hatch. A bromeliad hides an older nest. The father loyally broods the eggs, which have started to develop. A beating heart is visible. Embryos are beginning to move. And because cockies hatch as froglets, limb buds are appearing. The male guards the eggs and prevents them from drying out. The danger is never far away. This predatory snail will eat cocky eggs. The male on the fresh clutch can sense the danger. And does something unimaginable. He begins to eat his own eggs. When such a young clutch is threatened, a male will often choose to reabsorb the energy and start again.
Eggs that do survive take 28 days to develop. When the time is right, tiny fully formed frogs enter the world. They disperse from the nest after five days. But these juveniles are not yet safe. Froglet-eating scorpions lurk in the shadows. The rains which fall give the islands a plentiful supply of fresh water, vital for them to sustain life. All this water runs down towards the ocean, leaching nutrients from the soils and feeding them into the Caribbean Sea. Even here, there are signs of volcanic activity. Submerged fumaroles emit gases from cracks in the seafloor. These warm, nutrient-rich waters are ideal for one of the Caribbean's richest treasures its coral reefs. They are home to over 800 different species of fish and many more crustaceans and invertebrates. They might look like underwater gardens, but the reefs are actually huge colonies of millions of tiny animals called polyps. They create the intricate network of ever-growing corals. They seem inanimate, but corals can grow up to 15 centimeters in a year. Many of the fish that find shelter and protection in these reefs are found nowhere else on Earth. Not just fish and marine reptiles rely on these waters. Large marine mammals also depend on it. The Silver Bank is a shallow area of sea above a huge limestone shelf north of the Dominican Republic. A Spanish galleon sank here in the 17th century and a hoard of silver treasure was lost to the sea, which is how the Silver Bank got its name. Nowadays, these waters shelter different treasures. Female humpback whales come here to give birth. These calm waters are the perfect place for newborns to learn in safety. The bond between the humpback mother and calf is extremely strong. They are inseparable as the mother teaches her infant all the skills it will need. Every year, between December and April, around 3,000 humpbacks pass through the silver bank. When summer arrives, the whales move on to their feeding grounds thousands of kilometers away in the North Atlantic. The Caribbean's role as a nursery is vital for the survival of these great ocean voyagers. Nearly all of the Caribbean islands have coral reefs off their shores, but Trinidad has almost none at all. It lies so close to South America that silt from the Orinoco River makes the surrounding sea too muddy for coral to grow. However, coral reefs were once present here. Mount Tamana, in the highlands of the island, was one such reef. Thousands of years ago, tectonic forces 
pushed it almost 300 meters above sea level. Now the ancient reef forms a massive network of limestone caves. These caves play host to one million bats. Trinidad is home to almost 70 species of bat, 11 of which roost in the Tamana Caves. Spear-nosed and funnel-eared bats roost alongside leaf-nosed, mouse-eared and tailless bats. The floor of the cave is piled high with bat droppings, which in itself supports a biodiversity all of its own. Communities that develop on guano can be very distinct. The copious amounts of droppings provide cockroaches with an endless supply of food. While the roaches are a source of food for other animals, like the whip scorpion. In the weak sunlight that reaches the cave's entrance, seeds defecated by the bats are able to sprout. But the lack of light makes the seedlings fragile, the stems growing long in a bit for the sun. Above ground, the forest is rich in flowers, fruits, and insects. And each evening, as the sun begins to fade, the bats fly out to feed. Some of them travel from deep within the labyrinth of tunnels and chambers, 300 meters below ground. With so many bats leaving through one small entrance, the exodus can take several hours. This mass emergence happens at similar caves all over the Caribbean. But at a cave in Puerto Rico, the bats don't get it so easy. As night falls, 300,000 individuals begin heading out to feed. But this also means running the gauntlet. As they swarm out, they head straight up into the trees, taking them right past some very crafty hunters. Puerto Rican boas have gathered at the entrance. They have developed a taste for bat. As their prey increases, the boas slither into their chosen positions. As many as 21 snakes have been seen at this cave in one night. Using roots, vines and rocks to grip onto, over half their body hangs precariously in space. This may appear foolhardy as they repeatedly get hit by flying bats. But this seemingly strange tactic has evolved for a reason. When a bat hits the snake's nose, it triggers a lightning reaction. With a deadly strike, the boa grabs the bat, throws two coils around it, and starts to constrict. As bat emergence peaks, the snakes catch one after another. This food source 
is not the easiest to consume, however. It takes skill and time to manipulate the small winged mammals enough to be able to swallow them. Even so, some unfortunate bats are still alive as they go down. Boas can usually only manage two or three a night. When the feasting is over, the snakes retreat, stomachs full, to digest their meal. During the months of December to May, life on these islands is tranquil. But when summer arrives, the Caribbean can become an altogether darker place. From June to November, these islands are often hit by ferocious hurricanes. Most begin life as tropical storms off the coast of West Africa. They tear across the Atlantic, sucking up heat from the warm water and growing in intensity. The islands of the Caribbean are the first landmasses these hurricanes come to. A storm becomes a hurricane when the wind exceeds 120 kilometers per hour, making it a Category 1. Category 5 hurricanes top 250. Even with the best forecasting, no one can predict when a hurricane may strike. The waves created can reach 20 meters high as they smash into coastlines. But many Caribbean islands have their own constant living defense against erosion. Mangrove forest. With one foot on land and one in the sea, the mangrove forms a natural breakwater. The tangle of roots reduces the power of big waves and storm surges. Caroni Swamp lies on Trinidad's west coast. Twice a day, at high tide, the mangrove is inundated with seawater. Few plants can cope with such salty conditions, and many Caribbean mangroves only have three or four species of tree. Yet the trees create a habitat that shelters a rich and unique ecosystem. It's a nursery for many young fish. The constant rise and fall of the tides presents opportunities and challenges to all that live here. At low tide, the swamp's thick mud is a rich source of food for the population of fiddler crabs. Each teaspoon of mud contains around 10 million bacteria. The male crabs use their one small claw to feed on this microscopic food. While their big claw, which resembles a violin, is reserved for waving. This display is designed to attract a female and defend their burrows from rivals.
males choose a mate on claw size and quality of display. Having an escape hole is vital. There are predators around. When the tide is out, scarlet ibis flock to the shallows to feed. They probe the mud in search of crustaceans, like fiddler crabs and shrimp, amphibians and insects. Their diet of red shellfish, rich in carotene, gives them their vivid color. Young birds are born gray, and it takes about two years before they've eaten enough carotene to turn red. Dipping the crabs in the water before swallowing them helps clean off the mud. Every evening at dusk, the ibis return in large flocks to tiny islands within the mangrove. They gather in their hundreds to roost for the night. Trinidad separated from South America around 12,000 years ago when sea levels rose at the end of the last ice age. As a result, some mainland mammals got stranded there and they are not found anywhere else in the Caribbean. The island is home to a troop of white-throated capuchins. This small monkey is known for being a particularly resourceful primate. But life on a Caribbean island requires its own special strategies. Trinidad's capuchins have found that the island's coca-ripe palm trees are a rich source of food. Dead leaves and branches harbor all kinds of insects and grubs. Having a prehensile tail means that both hands can be kept free for eating. Although they also eat nectar, fruit is by far their favorite food. South American mammals are not the only alien invaders in the Caribbean. And for getting to islands further away than Trinidad, the Caribbean Sea has proved a big barrier. The iconic coconut palm is a relative newcomer to the Caribbean. Originally from Southeast Asia, they only arrived here around five centuries ago. These palms are perfectly designed to deal with the region's tropical storms. Up to 4,000 roots spread out under the sand, giving the palm a firm anchor to withstand the frequent hurricanes. And it's hurricanes that have also assisted their travels. Strong winds help dislodge their seeds, and these are cast adrift on the ocean's currents. The coconuts are especially buoyant and can float for months without sinking. When they eventually wash ashore, a new island is colonized. In just 500 years, coconuts have spread to virtually every island in the Caribbean. But some animals have also succeeded in becoming accomplished island hoppers and with quite ingenious methods.
Strong winds also destroy trees. So after a storm, there's a lot of vegetation drifting in the sea. These makeshift rafts are one way in which species like the lesser Antillian iguana have been able to spread across the Caribbean. The iguana has colonized many of the Eastern Caribbean islands. And 10,000 individuals live on the island of Dominica. Iguanas follow a strict hierarchy, which is color-coded. Dominant males turn dark gray, while females and juveniles are shades of green. April brings the mating season, and females dig a meter-long burrow in which to lay their eggs. Each dominant male defends a small territory with up to seven nesting females. Rivals are warned off with a display of head bobbing. lays up to 18 eggs, and over the next three months, they will be incubated purely by solar power. By June, emerald green babies are ready to break out and scramble their way into the sunlight. These iguanas are a Caribbean success story. They've turned the devastation wreaked by hurricanes to their advantage, using it to emigrate to islands that would otherwise be completely out of reach. The islands of the Caribbean have been shaped by millions of years of volcanic activity. Lying in the heart of Hurricane Alley, they also withstand some of the most ferocious storms on Earth. Yet these islands are home to an extraordinary variety of wildlife. From clever opportunists to highly evolved specialists, the Caribbean protects those that live life in the fast lane and attracts seafarers from far and wide. Though the pirates of legend are long gone, the wild treasures of the Caribbean remain. <laughs>